Coach Tony. Hey, welcome back, everybody. That Tony Miola, man, good guest. You're with Hey Coach Tony on ESPN Radio this fine Saturday morning. Hey, folks, in the June 6th edition of Sports Illustrated, uh, my good buddy George Dorman wrote one of the most heralded pieces about the corruption in college football that I have read in a long time. The, uh, the piece centered around the Ohio State football program, and in particular, recently former head coach Jim Tressel. Now, again, if you haven't read the piece, you've got to get your hands on it. It is just terrific. Anyway, George Dorman has been a guest on the show before, and he is always great. So I am very pleased to welcome George to the show again. Hey, uh, hey, George, good morning, man. Thanks for joining me so early in your day out in California. How are you doing this morning? Doing great, Tony. Doing great, thanks. Well, welcome back to Hey Coach Tony. And listen, first things first. <laughs> I know I've told you this, and I've mentioned it several times, but, man, great, great piece in SI. Thanks so much. Yeah, it was a lot of work, but um, it, 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 uh, it worked out. Well, when I first saw how long the article was, I was like, wow. But, you know, it just flew right by. And listen, you are clearly Flavor of the Month. And I know that you have done probably 50 different radio interviews this week uh, on every network imaginable. When you wrote the story, um, well, listen, after reading it, it was pretty easy to see that somebody had to do this in hindsight. But i got to ask you, what prompted you uh, to begin probing into OSU? Tell me a little bit about the background before the story. You know, I just, uh, in December, Ohio State told the world that, you know, five was five players were suspended for trading memorabilia and autographs for, for tattoo work. And I thought, okay, well, I'm sure there's more players because there's, you know, 85 scholarship players on a football team. I find it hard to believe that only five are guilty. Mm-hmm. And uh, I just waited and waited and waited and sort of never heard that news. And so, you know, in April, middle of April, I just after the bosses let me go out there and I started looking for people who worked at the tattoo parlors and um, and was able to find them. And so, uh, you know, it's kind of the story was right there for anybody who wanted to, to grab it. Uh, just it seemed like the local papers, they were, the local media was sort of in bed with the university, and so they, they weren't going to do it. So, uh, so I did it. I mean, listen, when you wrote the story, I'm sure you knew there was going to be interest, but did you have any idea just how impactful your story would become so quickly? Uh, yes and no. I guess you know that the college football fans are passionate, and you expect Ohio State fans to be passionate. But I, it's been a little crazier than I expected. Certainly, the vitriol that I've gotten from Ohio State fans, you know, uh, who just can't sort of come to terms with the fact that this could have happened and might be true, um, you know. Uh, so it's been a real. It's been that. That certainly has surprised me. The level of. Uh, sort of hate that gets thrown around uh, when the facts are the facts is is surprising. I mean, (laughs) well, well, let me ask you this, because this is one that kind of ate away at me, because, again, if you read the article, this is no-brainer stuff, and I don't mean the ability to get the information. I mean the ability to apply and assign guilt. But why do you think there's been such a strong reaction specifically to Jim, to to Trestle? Because I got my own ideas about that, but, you know, in, from a human nature perspective, George, why do you think the reaction's been so strong? I mean, there are other guys with controversy around him. Why would the reaction so strong to Trestle? Well, you know, Trestle had created this image of himself as being, you know, as one book about him is called More Than a Coach, right? You know, he wasn't just a man who coached football and won football games, and he won a lot. He was very successful. Uh, but he was also more than that, you know. And, and, you know, I you know I don't doubt that he was a guy who visited hospitals, and I don't doubt that he was a guy who supported the military, and I don't doubt all the other things that people say he did. But what happened was is that image of him sort of was used or was allowed to cover up the other part of him, which was that he was a big-time football coach who would do anything to win. And so what you had was when, you, when I'm pointing out the, the, the negatives, pointing out that, you know, all the times that his players broke the rules and pointing out that, that you know, the NCAA is investigating him and that he lied and that he cheated, you know, people are saying, you're attacking the integrity of this man. I mean, you're, you know, he's not that man. He's this man. And I say, no, actually, he's both. He, you can be both. And that's just unsettling for people because they had sort of created, you know, put him on a pedestal. He was a deity. He was Mr. Wonderful. And then so it's frustrating for people when, when that, the, you know, the wool gets pulled underneath that. Yeah, I mean, I, I always looked at it the same way. I mean, this, this guy's been positioned and has positioned himself as a squeaky clean guy and this moral standard by which most, if not all other college football coaches are going to be compared. I'm sure that had a lot to do with it. I mean, 
you know, do you, do you think if this was, <laughs> you know, somebody outgoing, like, you know, like an old Barry Switzer or somebody like that, do you think they would have caught as much heat? No, I mean, I think, you know, personally, I have, I have more respect for for people who just are what they are than people who are, you know, in essence, you know, say they live by a certain coda and then only do that, you know, in certain ways and then and then act differently, you know, in, in their professional life. So, um, you know, I, I think, uh, you know, Trestle was just, it, it, it's just, you know, people... It's called the, the myth. I talk about the myth of Trestle. In college football, we create myths all the time. The myth of the amateur athlete, the myth of these wonderful coaches, you know, these things like that. And and the myth with Trestle was just really strong. Uh, no question. And I'm sure, listen, that myth that was, listen, it was, it, was, it was perpetuated. We propagated with all this information. We all, I think, we were all reaching for something to believe in. And, and maybe Trestle was the easiest guy to latch on to. But just... Just give us an idea. First of all, listen, we're going to be taking your calls at 855-HEY-COACH. I mean, I like hogging the mic when I got George on, and I'm going to do that to a bit. But we'll take your calls. So the studio lines are open at 855-HEY-COACH. But give us a quick flavor, if you can, just how strong has the kickback, the, the bile, how strong has that been from the fan community at OSU? I mean, I, it's, I just don't understand. I mean, you know, it's, you, you expect it and you assume that they'll be in denial, but, like, they they're just they're just silly. I mean, they're just it's just silly how much you know people are saying. Oh, you you lie. You know, you're going to get sued. You're, I mean, you're, and and you're just sitting back and you're just saying, no, I'm I'm not lying. I'm not making any of this up. All of it is sourced. All of it is good. I, they don't care. They're not going to listen to that. And so they they throw out you know. Uh, you know, you get you get your death threats. You get these emails. You know, tell people telling you, you know, what you where you can put your head and and what you can put it up. And you can, you know, I mean, so it's just it's just you know, it's funny. I get even emails I get that are the funniest. They'll be like, you know, subject line. They'll have the word, you know, congratulations, and then so you open it up, and then it says you're an a hole. <laughs> like I, I, dude, I don't need to laugh. But listen, your writing is so poignant and so great. I mean, listen, you can't even trip on a feel-good piece without getting some controversy. The book you wrote, which again, if you if you have anything to do with youth basketball, you got to get this. George started out following a, a highly heralded young kid who was highly recruited, and this turned into the ultimate expose. Dude, you have a gift what you do. But are you telling me you're really getting death threats? I mean, you know. I, I mean, there are idiots who have email think, accounts, but I mean. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I hate saying that because people go, "Oh, it's a big deal," <laughs> you know. And I, and I just say, I just, you know, like work called and asked me if I had got one because my colleague on the story, David Epstein, had gotten a couple, and and I just said, you know what, I, you know, I got some emails from people who are, you know, who are stupid, and I said, I'm not, I don't call those death threats because it's just too easy these days to send mm -hmm. an email, so. You know, uh, it seems like you need to get something a little more than that to actually for it to qualify as a death threat. So I, I don't, you know, I, I just don't, I just don't sort of take that stuff that seriously, and I don't, uh, you know, it, it, I don't like because I think people use it to draw attention to themselves. Oh, I get you know, I, I don't care. I just don't, you know, it's part of the part of the deal. And you know, listen, and listen. There's denial, and then there's just stupidity. I mean. Maybe the people in Ohio are having trouble with the big words in your article, but anybody who read that article, come on. you got to be kidding yourself, and you got to want to believe that there's something special going on and there's some conspiracy because it, it just don't add up. And, and listen, yeah. George, the, the time's flying, man. I'm, we got to go to a quick break. I want you to stick around. And, uh, hey, you know, listen, I want to tell you again what a terrific guest that you are and how much I really enjoy having you on this program. So even though you're never going to wear it on one of your TV bits there, good looking, you know what, or around the office uh, at SI, I'm going to send you, and if you're on YouTube, you can see this, I'm going to send you a Hey Coach Tony t-shirt. What size are you wearing? Uh, it's medium. Medium? All right, good. So I'll give you one. The shirt, by the way, as well as my Hey Coach Tony coffee mug. Uh, that I always have on the show that I finally found. It's provided by Signature Marketing of Connecticut. So be sure to call my friend Jennifer Holgein at Signature Marketing. They're at 203-232-0868. And she's going to help you design the best promotional products for your company or your organization, whether it's a T-shirt like the one I'm sending to George or the coffee mug or any of a number of different promotional products for your sales meeting, your golf outing, your charity event, whatever you're doing. Jennifer Holgein and her team at Signature Marketing can really do it all for you. So call them today at 203-232-0868 or visit them on the web at SignatureMarketing.com. And remember, 
If you know someone who's going to be a great guest on my show, granted, they're not going to be as good as my man George here or Tony Miola, but if you think you got the chops to hang out in the studio with me, shoot me a note at heycoachtony at gmail.com, or after the show, you can call the hotline at 855-HEY-COACH. You're listening to Hey Coach Tony on ESPN Radio. Stick around. We'll be right back. Coach Tony. Hey, welcome back, everybody. You're listening to Hey Coach Tony on ESPN Radio this lovely Saturday morning, and I am joined by uh, probably the best investigative sports reporter in the business, uh, SI columnist, George Dorman, and uh, I'm going to get right back into some of this Q&A stuff, George, because I just don't ever have enough time with you, man. i got to tell you, reading the article, I personally learned something about Tressel, and I bet a lot of folks either don't know or don't remember a lot of this stuff. I mean, ignorance... And I'm going to use, the tr- and use that term in the truest sense. Ignorance seems to be a trait that has not only followed him through his career, but has served him up until recently fairly well in his career. I mean, in the mid-90s, while coaching at Youngstown State, he claimed not to know that his star QB received a car and more than ten grand from a school trustee, even though it was later proven that Tressel directed this kid to go see that trustee. Then in 2003... Uh, Maurice Claret, the Ohio State running back, was found to have received money and other benefits. Tressel admitted himself that Claret was a kid that he had spent more time with than pretty much anybody else on the team, yet he also says, I had no knowledge that Claret was violating NCAA rules. Just a year later, uh, Tressel's quarterback, Troy Smith, was found to have taken 500 bucks from a booster. And this was a booster who had already been investigated by the NCAA. Yet again, he maintains he had no knowledge of any of this. Question for you, George. <laughs> are, are all of us in the sports media business all just that stupid? Or do we deep down really want to believe in a guy like Tressel? Or should I say, really want to believe in a guy like the one we all thought Tressel actually uh, was? Do we really want to think somebody like that exists in college football? I think it's a combination of things. I think that's part of it. I think that it's also, um, you know, it's difficult to, you know, I'm, I'm lucky that I work for Sports Illustrated and they say to me, go look into these things. Like, that's my job, mm-hmm. right? Like, that's it. I mean, I do other stories for them from time to time, but my primary job is investigative work. So, you know, I have the ability to go there and, you know, make two different trips to Columbus and spend six, five or six weeks on this. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's hard if you're, you know, a reporter, let's say, you know, and you're just covering Ohio State, you're covering games, you're covering practices, you're covering, you're writing profiles, and you're supposed to also, you know, hang out at talk to parlors and, you know, try to interview people. But it's not easy. But, you know, that said, um, it, it was widespread enough when some of this should have come out and sort of more people should have put two and two together. And, and but, you know, it's a big industry, Ohio State football in, in the state of Ohio, and it's creates a lot of jobs, it creates a lot of income for newspapers in terms of readers and advertisers and things like that. So there's just this weird, there's always been with sports, you know, there's just this weird relationship that exists that often undercuts some of the journalism that should be done. I love the level of objectivity that you maintain doing these stories because I could never, I could just never do it. Let me ask you this, do you think Tressel's going to be remembered for anything, and I mean literally, do you think he's going to be remembered for anything other than what's happened over the past couple of months? I think it's one of those things, you know, Woody Hayes, the famous Ohio State coach, won all these games and did all these wonderful things, and his players loved him. But, you know, he punched a guy at the end mm-hmm. of his career, and that, and that cost him his job. And, and so he's always known as the great Woody Hayes, who, oh, by the way, punched a kid. Wasn't that sad how it, wasn't that sad how it ended? Yeah. And I think, you know, over time, some things will stop John Trestle will get lost again. Some of the things I wrote about in my story will get will get forgotten and so he'll sort of just be remembered as like, he'll remember it as Jim Trestle, who won a lot of football games at Ohio State, and who at the very end, you know, made a mistake by, you know, covering up NCAA violations, and that cost him his job. And, and here's here's one of the things that really got me. And again, I just keep pointing back to your articles. I just loved it, man. With great read. But one of the things that really gets me isn't just the lying that he did, but it was the manner in which he went about lying. He didn't just yeah. say he had no knowledge. This guy. He went into a mini sermon when the allegations first went public. And I was going to say, if you remember, of course you remember. Yeah, yeah. But he talked about how disappointed he was that his players weren't listening to the, and, and what did he call it, George, the little censor? He said yeah. he was disappointed yeah. his players weren't listening to the little censor inside that knew right from wrong. Tressel, where the hell is your little censor? I mean, is there any accountability for making these stupid statements and having them blow up in your face? Yeah, I mean, I think that this was mismanaged by him and by, 
the university in a big way. Because even when he got in front of the media and said, I did this, he didn't sort of fall on the sword completely. You know, he tried to justify it and say, oh, I did it to protect my pleasure, I did it to protect confidentiality, things that were always sort of easy to poke holes in and say, well, you were protecting the confidentiality, but you forwarded the email to somebody. You know, like how, you know, what are you doing? And so it, it was, it was really bungled by um, him and, and the athletic director and the president. And, you know, as a result of that, you, you look back and you say, gosh, you know, how many mistakes could you have made? You know, they, they would say that, you know, the line is the cover up's always worse than the crime. And I think mm-hmm. in this case with Tressel, it certainly was, but also the PR disaster once he tried to acknowledge the cover up. Oh, this was, was a PR poo-poo yeah. storm and I mean and I'm gonna go back to when, when it was first discussed publicly remember what, he, what was his first reaction remember he said I know so I knew something was wrong but I just didn't know who to call come on are you kidding me I mean hey, I don't get paid three four million bucks a year to coach but you know what I bet I know what to do you want to hear it Tressel if you're listening which you're not but that's okay I google NCAA and I find their phone number then I call it, and I ask whoever answers the phone, Hello, my name's Tony Fiorino, and I want to report a violation of NCAA rules. Can you please connect me to the right person? <laughs> or how about this? If you're not sure what to do, who do you think might be a good person to bounce this off? I don't know. How about the AD, whose office is probably a 30-second walk from yours? But, I mean, George, this guy still throws out the I don't know defense again. Is, it, is, yeah, just, I mean, is this I just a plain old insult to, to your intelligence and mine? Are we supposed to believe this garbage? Well, I think, again, he, he said that stuff a lot, and I think that that speaks to sort of two things. One, the level of comfort he had with, you know, his myth in some ways, the level he had with people having bought into who he was, right? Because mm-hmm. even when he makes a mistake, I'm Jim Trussell. Well, no, but you are who you, you are. The mistakes you make as well. But he was. I'm Jim Dressel. I'm, I'm this man. You know me, right? I mean, I, you know, years ago, I remember when I wrote a story about the University of Minnesota that that um, brought down their coach. You know, his first response when we brought in the allegations of just widespread academic fraud that he, you know, knew about. His response was, "Oh, you know me. You know what kind of man I am. You know what I stand for." Yeah, we do and now. These, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And these coaches do that often. I think they say, "You know what I stand for." Then they assume. That sort of their, their their image is going to carry them through when it, when it really it never does. But George, how does a guy have this much smoke around him for so long, so long, and never just burst into flames until now? It really seems, and I said it before, but man, I'm just I, I guess I'm not believing what I know is true. It really seems as if people really wanted to believe that he was not just this moral compass, but he was, people really want to believe that he was as uninformed as he portrayed himself. But how can you believe that? I mean, I guess if you are in Ohio and you love Jim Dressel and you love the Buckeyes and all you care about is them winning football games because that's such a big part of your life, probably an unhealthy portion of your life, then you can believe that. And then that, and, and they have, they still do. I mean, because by my emails, they still do. So, um, you know, that's, uh, it's just, it's silly, but, but it exists. <laughs> Man. Hey, George, listen, <clears throat> we're running out of time, of course, because I never have enough time with you. But tell me this. What should the average reader take away from this piece that you wrote? I mean, me, I take away a bunch of heartburn, as you can tell, and a lot of frustration. But what did you re- – when you finally handed in that edited piece, final, uh, final edit, what did you intend for readers to take away from this? I mean, you know, beyond the obvious, I think that you hope that people will think twice before they, you know, place these coaches that they don't know <laughs> at all on those on that giant pedestal. I mean, I understand that you want to admire people and you have your school or your team, but, you know, they're just coaches and they're fallible, and, and so just... You know, let them be human beings. Don't let them be, you know, the greatest people who ever lived, a man who I should, you know, live my life like and all of these kind of things. I mean, there certainly should always be, uh, there's always role models out there who, um, you know, maybe, you know, are, are not coaches who are probably easier or smarter picks to be, you know, to implement your life after than, than a football coach. 
Well, you know what? I still hang on to the dream, man. I think there are some good ones. But you know what I point to is the school is just as bad, if not worse, in Trestle. I mean, listen, during the recent investigation against some of the players for illegal use and or acceptance of the cars, that whole thing, one player in particular, I think it was what, Terrell Pryor, this guy is like a focal point of the investigation. So does Ohio State cooperate? Nope. Yeah. They what? I'll quote this. They declined to make prior available for comment. Are you kidding me? I mean, do they think yeah. we're really stupid? I mean, why would you decline to make someone available co for comment? Let me tell you why. Because they're guilty. I tell you what, George, your next article, I want it to be about me. And I want you to find out if I'm accepting cars from ESPN for doing my show. And when you come to ask me about it, am I going to decline to make myself available? No freaking way. And why? Because I have nothing to hide. George, you investigate me, you take my fingerprints, help, give me a pap smear if you want, because you know what, I've done nothing wrong, and you're not going to find anything. Dude, you continue to, to, to just elicit such emotion out of me with the way you write, man. I love what you do. I mean, it's becoming obvious this sort of stuff happens all over college sports. We know it with the real sports thing that came out. Uh, football's probably the biggest culprit. Dude, is there any way to really stop this? No, I mean, I think that there, there's always some going to be some level of NCAA violations at schools, but I do think that if you hire a coach who is interested in sort of creating an atmosphere of compliance, then um, then you can minimize it, and then and, and 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 things become small, and there isn't scandals over eight years involving you know dozens of players. You just get sort of isolated incidents. And it's important it's, to throw the book at the guys that we catch, correct? Exactly, yes. Oh, man. I... <laughs> Oh, man. Listen, guys, another amazingly quick hour of my life uh, has has gone by. I, I want to thank George. Dude, you're amazing. I can't wait to have you back on again. Go write another book or find something else for us to go snot on because you're the best, man. Listen, every Saturday, folks, 9 a.m., I can't, can't tell you how much I appreciate the phone calls, the emails, and the thoughts. This is what I love to do, and I will continue to shine a light on this garbage as long as there's garbage to shine a light on. So listen, I hope you guys enjoyed the rest of your weekend. I'm Tony Fiorino, and I'll see you all next week.